To begin to configure Prisma Access, first verify that you have the requisite licenses installed on your panorama and then licenses. Verify that you have the licenses for the mobile users, remote networks, and Cortex data lake, as well as the appropriate sizing for each one. Next, go to the Cloud Services plugin and click on Status, and just verify that the connection to Cortex Data Lake says OK. Afterwards, we're going to go to the Configuration tab, and we're going to configure the service infrastructure. We're going to click on the gear icon under Service Setup and Settings. We're going to supply an infrastructure subnet. This is an IP address range that is unique to Prisma Access, so it cannot overlap with any other IP address range in your environment. Next, specify a BGP AS that Prisma Access can use. Here, we're just going to leave it on the default. Note that there is a service connection template that's created. This will allow you to modify the settings for Prisma Access. Next, we have the parent device group, which will again allow us to uh, modify the policy settings for Prisma Access. Next, we're going to add an internal domain. This is so that Prisma Access has the ability to resolve internal domains. So we specified an internal domain here, as well as the private IP addresses that have the ability to resolve them. Next, we're going to go to the Cortex data link. And we're going to verify the logging theater is correct. Here we have America selected, and I'll go ahead and click OK. So next we're going to configure the IPsec tunnel. This can be done under the template. So we're going to go under the network tab and verify that we're on the service connection template. We'll first go to the Ike gateway. Under the Ike Gateway, provided a name, just something that will be easy to find in the logs should you have to do any troubleshooting. For the peer address type, we're going to select Dynamic, and then supply a pre-shared key that you'll be using on the remote device as well. You can add peer identification as well. Under Advanced Options, enable Passive Mode, so that way Prisma Access will respond to the incoming IPsec connection rather than try and initiate it on its own. And then you can verify the IPv1 and IPv2 settings as needed. I'm just going to go ahead and leave the defaults. So next I'm going to navigate to IPsec Tunnels. You can create a new tunnel. Again, give it a name. Select the IP gateway that you just created. I'm going to leave the default IPsec crypto profile, but you can modify that to your company standards as needed. And you can optionally add tunnel monitoring. Other than that, I'm just going to leave the defaults and I'm going to click OK. So lastly, we're going to onboard the service connection. So far we've configured the IPsec tunnel. Now we just need to tell Prisma Access to use this IPsec tunnel. So this is going to be half of the IPsec tunnel. And then later on, we'll be configuring the IPsec tunnel from the remote device to Prisma Access. So under onboarding, you can click on add, specify the name, add the location. Here I've selected Netherlands Central. Add the IPsec tunnel that you've created. And then add the subnets that will be reachable across this service tunnel. You can optionally do BGP instead, and we also support quality of service. Lastly, to run a commit, click on the commit button and select commit and push. Hit edit selections. Then click on Prisma Access and verify that the service setup is selected. Go ahead and click OK and then run a commit and push.